Chemistry lecture number 39, Lewis dot structures. Lewis dot structures are diagrams that show how atoms and a molecule are bonded together. A simple Lewis dot structures can be made by following the following steps. You draw a dot diagram of each atom in the molecule, determine how many unpaired electrons are in each atom, and this is the number of bonds it will form. Arrange the atoms so that an unpaired electron can pair up with another unpaired electron. A line can be substituted for a pair of shared electrons, and check your work. Is each atom making the correct number of bonds? Does hydrogen now have two electrons, and do the other atoms have eight? So let's draw the Lewis structure for H2. The way we're going to do this is hydrogen is in group one, and then all we're going to do is here are the valence electrons, and we're just going to pair them up. We get that. Okay. And then we can substitute a, a single line. And that's all there is to it. You just draw the uh, dot diagram, and if there are any unpaired electrons, you pair them up. Okay. Notice that each hydrogen forms one bond. Let's draw the Lewis dot structure for H2O. Okay, hydrogen is group one, so it's going to have one valence electron. Um, oxygen is in group six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And then here's the other hydrogen with its one valence electron. And you can see that we can just pair up these electrons and pair up these electrons. And we'll get that. Or we can get that. Now notice that each hydrogen forms one bond because it has one valence electron. And then oxygen forms two bonds because it starts with two unpaired electrons. See? Right here. Two unpaired electrons on oxygen. So <clears throat> when you draw the uh, dot things, add the dots one at a time to each side. And you either go counterclockwise or clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll give you the number of unpaired electrons. And then, I mean, this, these are equivalent. Once you figure out the number of unpaired electrons, you can move the dots around. Let's draw NH3, okay? Nitrogen is in group five, so five electrons, one, two, three, four, five. So that tells us that nitrogen has three unpaired electrons, and then hydrogen, all the hydrogens have one. Okay, so if we arrange this to pair up all the unpaired electrons, We'll pair these up, we'll pair these up, and we'll pair these up. We'll end up with that, or we can draw it as that. Okay, so notice that nitrogen starts with three unpaired electrons and forms uh, three bonds. Also notice that nitrogen is surrounded by two, four, six, eight electrons, which gives it an octet. Each oxygen has two electrons. Draw CH4. Okay, carbon is in group four on the periodic chart. One, two, three, four. And then each hydrogen has one valence electron. So to arrange this to pair up all the unpaired electrons, we can do it like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll pair up the electrons on the carbons and the hydrogens. We'll end up with that. Or we could draw it as this. Okay, notice that carbon starts with four unpaired uh, electrons and forms four bonds. So the number of bonds that each atom can form depends on how many unpaired electrons it has. Now this procedure works with simple molecules, but it's helpful to use another procedure when the molecules become more complicated. So the following procedure works for both simple and complicated molecules. <coughs> it's a long series of steps, but here we go. You draw a dot diagram of each atom to determine the number of unpaired electrons on each atom. And this will be the number of bonds it can form. Estimate the location of the atoms. The atom with the most unpaired electrons will probably be in the middle, and the other atoms will, be, will surround and bond with it. And count the total number of valence electrons from all the atoms. 
and then you place pairs of electrons between the central atom and the surrounding term or terminal atoms. Uh, keep track of the number of pairs distributed. Place the remaining electrons in pairs on the terminal atom until each has an octet, uh, but do not put extra electrons on hydrogen. It only wants two electrons. If there are any electrons le uh, left over, place them on the central atom. If the central atom does not have an octet, move pairs of unshared electrons from the terminal atom so they are between the central atom and the terminal atom. Okay, what do all those words mean? Well, I'll show you. <clears throat> let's draw the Lewis dot structure for CCL4. So first, let's just draw a dot diagram so we can get an idea of how many uh, unpaired electrons each type of atom has. Chlorine's in group 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So chlorine has one unpaired electron, carbon has four unpaired electrons, chlorine's going to form one bond, and carbon's going to form four bonds. Now we're going to use that information to check our work at the end. All right, so let's add up the total number of uh, valence electrons. So carbon is in group 4. Um, there's one carbon, and it's in group 4, so there's four valence electrons. Chlorine. There are four chlorines, CCL4, and then chlorine is in group seven. So there will be a total number of 28 valence electrons from chlorine. 28 plus four is 32. So that's the total number of valence electrons. All right, so <clears throat> let's put carbon in the middle because it has the most unpaired electrons. It has four. All right, and then, oh, ah, screwing it up, sorry. Let's try again. We'll put carbon in the middle, and then we'll surround it with the uh, chlorines. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take these 32 electrons and start distributing them. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put bonds between the chlorine and the carbon, and we're going to keep track of the electrons as we do this. So, two, four, six, Eight. So we've used up eight of these 32 electrons. Now we're going to start putting electrons on the chlorines until all the chlorines have an octet. So we have eight electrons being shared between the chlorines and the carbon. <clears throat> so we have eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. So we've used up all the valence electrons. Is this the correct structure? Well, each chlorine forms one bond, like we predicted. Carbon forms four bonds, and all the atoms have eight electrons around it. They all have an octet, so that works. Let's draw the Lewis structure for pH3. So, phosphorus, group five, one, two, three, four, five, it'll form three bonds. Hydrogen, group one, it'll form one bond. All right, here we go. Count the valence electrons. Phosphorus is in group five, we have one phosphorus in group five, so it'll contribute five, <coughs> excuse me, five valence electrons. Hydrogen, three hydrogens in group one. So there'll be a total of eight valence electrons. So we have to distribute these electrons. All right, so I'm gonna put phosphorus in the middle because it has the most number of unshared electrons, and then we'll surround it with the three hydrogens. All right, now let's start distributing the electrons. Two, four, six. We've used six of the eight valence electrons. That leaves two electrons left over. So, <clears throat> where do we put the two electrons? Do we put them on the hydrogens? No, you don't. Hydrogen already has two electrons around it. Each hydrogen has two electrons around it. So, since the hydrogens won't want any more electrons, we put them on the central atom, the phosphorus. All right, did we do this right? Phosphorus forming three bonds? Yep. Each hydrogen forming uh, one bond? Yep. Phosphorus has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Everybody's happy. So that's our structure for pH 3. Let's draw the Lewis structure for NBr3. So nitrogen, group 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It'll form three bonds. Bromine, group 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. <clears throat> now, nitrogen. One nitrogen in group 5. Bromine, three bromines in group seven. 26 valence electrons we're going to distribute. We're going to put nitrogen in the middle because it has the greatest number of unshared electrons, three, whereas bromine only has one. We're going to surround the central atom with the terminal atoms. 
All right, so let's start distributing these uh, electrons here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. But we have 26, we have two more electrons we have to distribute. And where do we put those two other electrons? You put them on the central atom. Okay. Each nitrogen is forming three bonds. Um, each bromine is forming one bond. All the atoms here have eight electrons around it, and we're done. Everybody's happy. Let's draw the Lewis structure for CO2. So, carbon, group four, one, two, three, four. We expect carbon to form four bonds. Oxygen, group six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We expect each oxygen to form two bonds, because it has two unshared electrons. All right, let's count the valence electrons. Carbon, one carbon in group four. Oxygen, two oxygens in group six. A total of 16 electrons that we're going to distribute. So we'll put carbon in the middle, since it has four unpaired electrons, whereas oxygen only has two. We'll put the oxygens at each end here. All right, let's start distributing the electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, 12, 14, 16. So that distributes all the electrons. Well, we have a problem here. <coughs> Carbon doesn't have eight electrons around it. It only has four. Oxygen has eight electrons around it. So what we need to do is we need to move electrons that are on the terminal atoms in between the terminal and the central atom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two electrons and move them here. And then we're going to take these two electrons and move them here. That's going to give us that structure. All right. So these two dots is represented by this line here. Now um, we can check our work. Carbon is forming four bonds. One, two, three, four. Each oxygen is forming two bonds. Two bonds here and two bonds here. Each atom has an octet, two, four, six, eight around that oxygen, two, four, six, eight around the carbon, two, four, six, eight around the oxygen, and everybody's happy. Let's draw the Lewis structure for HCN. Okay, so hydrogen, group one, has one dot. Carbon, group four, one, two, three, four, four dots. Nitrogen, group five, one, two, three, four, five dots. So hydrogen will form one bond, carbon will form four, and nitrogen will form three bonds. All right, here we go. Hydrogen, one hydrogen in group one contributes one valence electron. Carbon, one carbon in group four, four valence electrons. Nitrogen, one nitrogen in group five, five valence electrons. So that's gonna be 10 electrons total that we have to distribute. All right, we'll put carbon in the center again because it has the greatest number of unshared electrons. <clears throat> and we'll put surround the central atom with the other ones. All right, let's distribute these 10 electrons. Two, four. All right, now where do we put the rest of the electrons? We put them on the terminal atoms first, the ones attached to the central one, but we're not gonna put anything on hydrogen because it already has two electrons. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, that uses up the electrons. All right, is everybody happy? I don't think so. Hydrogen's happy because it has two electrons. Nitrogen is happy because it has two, four, six, eight electrons. Carbon only has two, four electrons. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move these electrons here, and then we're gonna take these pair of electrons and move them in between here. So that's gonna give us this, this structure. A triple bond. All right, carbon now has two, four, six, eight around it. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight around it. Carbon is forming four bonds as predicted. Nitrogen is forming three bonds as predicted. Hydrogen forms one bond. Okay, so C and N have an octet. H has a pair of electrons. And everyone makes the appropriate number of bonds. So everybody's happy. Okay. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 39, Lewis Dot Structures.